Available now. Link below. In a shocking turn of events, the mainstream media has once again revealed its true colors in a blatant display of bias and panic. As former President Donald Trump's net worth soars to unprecedented heights, MSNBC hosts have taken to the airwaves in a frenzy, crying market manipulation and demanding intervention from the SEC. But the hysteria doesn't stop there. In a separate incident, CNN's Wolf Blitzer was caught red-handed pushing a deceptively edited video clip to smear Trump's comments on illegal immigrants. Fortunately, a brave pundit stepped in to fact-check Blitzer live on air, exposing the depths of the media's dishonesty. In this special report, we'll uncover the truth behind these alarming events and explore what they reveal about the state of journalism in America today. And you don't want to miss my final thought on this story because it matters to every American. Now, before we continue, let me ask you something. Are you feeling the weight of the current economic climate? Just like how the mainstream media relentlessly attacks President Trump, debt can feel like an overwhelming burden, but there is a solution. National debt relief has helped countless Americans, including myself, regain financial stability. With their personalized approach and top-rated service, you can get a free consultation and a customized plan to tackle your debt head-on. No upfront fees, just real solutions. Visit NoDebtWithGary.com to take the first step towards financial freedom, just like how we must stand up against media bias. Taking control of your debt is crucial. Remember, that's NoDebtWithGary.com. Now let's get back to our eye-opening report. In a stunning display of hypocrisy, MSNBC hosts have been sent into a tailspin over the unprecedented surge in former President Donald Trump's net worth. Last week, shares of Trump's latest venture skyrocketed, reaching a staggering $8 billion valuation and adding a reported $4 billion to his personal wealth. <laughs> the network's personalities wasted no time in expressing their disbelief and outrage, with some even questioning the role of the Security and Exchange Commission in what they decried as blatant market manipulation. Watch. And it's being valued in the billions of dollars. I mean, literally something like 2,000 times uh, the revenue number. I mean, the whole thing is absurd. Why the SEC does not think there's some kind of stock manipulation going on, by the way. But clearly, this is one of these almost meme-like stocks where there's clearly a group of people that are trying to push up the, the price to almost transfer money, potentially, uh, to the former president. That's what's going on here. Now, the question is whether he can sell his shares or get a loan against those shares. Uh, the only way that can happen right now he can't just go sell the shares tomorrow he would need to get permission from the board and that would then have to get disclosed by the way that unto itself could tank the stock even more because he would have to be a massive seller of the stock so okay. that's where we are nika even yesterday when the stock went down 20 25 percent let's put this in perspective yeah it is still valued at a number greater than what harley davidson bausch and loam are valued at those are companies that make products and make billions of dollars technically speaking you would say this company is fakakta. It does not do anything, okay? Any other social media but, platform that went public has a real business, has, has product innovations. This is nothing. All this is is Donald Trump posting. And so you've got, as Andrew said, you know, that whole kind of Wall Street bets, Trump loyalist, rah-rah boys saying, I'm going to take this thing to the moon. But the other group that could be, you know, more dangerous... What an unbelievable transfer of money, right? Unofficial payments, right. unregulated, almost political donations that nobody's going to track. And that's when people right. are looking at the SEC saying, are you kidding me? What, what does this say about the stock market? Well, I mean, it's, it, it doesn't doesn't speak well about the stock market, but this is true. I mean, that's why I said, where's the SEC in this? Because this is one of those true manipulations of sorts. And by the way, some of that manipulation is even happening on uh, different social media sites, including uh, Truth Social, about how this all is working, meaning people are prop trying to push up the price in almost like a pyramid-like way yeah. uh, to try to get money to the president to try to effectively influence the outcome of the election and why nobody's sitting around going, what is going on here? This makes no sense. So and it's happening. We're definitely watching it, right? The SEC is watching this thing right. like a hawk. And listen, he's worth all this money on paper right now, but giddy up. Because the day he goes to sell this thing, look out below, right. to your point, it's going to, to your tank. Point, this is a metaphor for what he, how he deals yes. with his voting people. He ends up screwing everybody. So he would, if, if anybody gets any money out, it'll be him. But you have all these people here who are buying worthless stock. Right. And but then so it's not them. Like, but what I right, let it be them rather than right. taxpayer I, dollars. The other thing, the other reason also that this is never going to make money is 
nobody's going to advertise on a Trump right. platform. You can't you can't get advertised other than, you know, gold bullion or cra these crazy things that you, see, that you used to see on, on Tucker Carlson's show. You cannot yeah. monetize this. You cannot sell ad space on this thing. So I don't know where the revenue stream is going to ever be in this company. So, John Hammond, give us your take. First of all, you can try to spell the word Stephanie used earlier a moment ago if you'd like. Oh, you need a juice. Uh, I mean, gotcha. that's, uh, that's when you come to the joke. <laughs> but beyond that, like, we, we know that Truth Social is, is not Twitter in, in terms of the pre former president's reach. He doesn't go to nearly as many people, but it's still an avenue for him to, you know, it gets amplified on cable and so on. You know, but this feels like it's a financial lifeline in another moment where people look around going, man, he's going to get away with it. Oh, they are just in panic. No advertising on True Social? Have you been on the platform? The host highlighted the company's valuation, which at its peak was a jaw-dropping 2,000 times its revenue. And they were quick to label this as absurd, demanding to know why the SEC hadn't intervened. And then, of course, the discussion delved into the potential mechanics of how Trump, the frontrunner for the 2024 presidential race, could capitalize on a surge in paper wealth. Now, for Trump to convert his soaring net worth into liquid assets, he would need approval from the company's board, a move that, if made public, could potentially tank the stock even more due to the massive sell-off it would trigger. But he doesn't have to sell off all of it, does he? No, maybe just a couple percent, and then uh, he would be fine. Now, MSNBC's Stephanie Rule went so far as to describe the former president's company as fakakta, which is a Yiddish term meaning nonsensical or messed up. And she claimed that unlike other so uh, social media platforms with tangible business models and innovation, Trump's venture lacks a concrete strategy beyond serving as a platform for his own postings. Well, isn't that interesting? Trump's postings are worth quite a bit, aren't they? Now, she continued that Quote, unofficial payments, unregulated, almost political donation, nobody's going to track. And that's when people are looking at the SEC and saying, are you kidding me? This financial phenomenon has placed Trump's media's firm share price at astonishing 2,000 times its revenue, drawing attention from both investors and critics. However, the mainstream media's attacks on President Trump extend beyond his financial success. In a separate incident, the Biden campaign attempted to push a false narrative by posting a deceptively edited clip of Trump speaking in Grand Rapids, Michigan. The seven second clip shared by the Biden-Harris HQ social media account showed Trump saying, the Democrats say, please don't call them animals, they're humans. Okay, this is what he was referring to. Now let's watch the clip. Uh, the Democrats say, please don't call them animals, they're humans. I said, no, they're not humans, they're not humans, they're animals. Astute social media users quickly pointed out that the clip had been manipulated to mislead viewers. The full video clearly demonstrates that Trump was referring specifically to illegal immigrants who commit murder when he used the term animal. Not all immigrants, as the edited clip suggests. Now, here is the full context. So I met with the grieving family of Lakin Riley. You know Lakin. She's... Uh... She was incredible. Top of her class. Everything was the top. She was the top of everything. She was incredible. I met the parents. Incredible people. The 22-year-old nursing student in Georgia who was barbarically murdered by an illegal alien animal. Uh, the Democrats say, please don't call them animals. They're humans. I said, no, they're not humans. They're not humans. They're animals. Nancy Pelosi told me that. She said, please don't use the word animal, sir, when you're talking about these people. I said, I'll use the word animal because that's what they are. Now, despite this fact, CNN's Wolf Blitzer chose to perpetuate the distortion during a conversation with commentators Scott Jennings and Bakari Sellers. Blitter, Blitz, Blitzer asked his guests, when he says these immigrants are animals, they're not humans, what does he suggest? I mean, isn't it brutal? Shouldn't people be condemning that? Now, to his credit, Jennings refused to accept Blitzer's narrative. He responded, saying, listen to the entire tape. He heard it, and he was specifically talking about the person who murdered Larkin Riley, Lake and Riley. Watch. But when he says these, uh, these immigrants are animals, they're not humans, what does that su suggest? I mean, isn't that brutal? Shouldn't people be condemning that? I listened to the entire tape. He was specifically talking about the person who murdered Lake and Riley in Georgia. And to be honest with you, Wolf, if somebody murders another human being, I think they deserve to be called animals. And I don't think any American 
uh, is really going to reject that kind of rhetoric. That poor girl was murdered in cold blood. Is that person who did it not an animal? I think that's an apt term. So you think he was only referring to those murderers, not referring in general to illegal immigrants who are coming into the United States? I listened to the tape. That's exactly what he was talking about, in my opinion. Oh, man. You see that? You see what Blitzer did? Absolutely. It's a disgrace. But so-called journalists like Blitzer can engage in such blatant dishonesty on air without consequence. And the fact that he was called out by a guest on his own show should be, well, a source of deep shame. This kind of partisan ideology masquerading as journalism is a betrayal of the trust placed in the free press by the American people. Sellers and Blitzer fail to recognize that crying wolf repeatedly will only lead to the public tuning out their false alarms. If you got value in this report, hit subscribe. My final thoughts coming up next, and you don't want to miss it. The mainstream media's coverage of Donald Trump's financial success and their blatant misrepresentation of his comments on illegal immigrants is a reminder of the depths to which they will sink to push their agenda. It's clear that the Biden administration and its allies in the press will stop at nothing to smear the former president, even if it means deceiving the American people. This is precisely why the Next News Network exists. We're here to expose the false narratives and outright lies perpetuated by those in power and their mouthpieces in the media. We will not stand idly by as they attempt to manipulate public opinion in silas dissenting voices. It's our duty to hold the media accountable and to provide the American people with the truth, and we will continue to fight against the bias and dishonesty that plagues our national discourse, and we will not rest until the truth prevails. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. Now keep up your quest for truth with this next news report. And if you found our channel enlightening, join the millions who agree with you. Tap subscribe. Thank you for watching the Next News Network.